Hi, welcome to another video. So, a lot of people like to create specifications or specs or do planning before getting into the AI coding itself. This is a good thing because you can define exactly what you want by brainstorming through a ton of options and laying out a plan before asking your AI coder to implement it. Some coders these days come with this built in. For example, at first, Taskmaster was something that allowed you to build out a task list for your project. Your coder could then access it, mark the tasks as complete, and move forward. Then, Anthropic saw that and just built it into Claude Code, allowing it to build a task list before doing something. And then other coders followed suit and implemented it as well. Kiro which is an AI editor by Amazon, took a more detailed approach to this. They allowed you to give it a task, and it could build out a whole specification of all the changes to implement and files to edit. This was similar to what you used to get with something like the architect mode in RuCode, but a bit more interactive. Still, I preferred to use RuCode's architect combined with Opus, or maybe DeepSeek's reasoning as that was way better for my tasks. But it seems that GitHub has launched their own Taskmaster-like tool to do spec-driven development. This is called SpecKit. It's a pretty complex thing. Personally, I'd rather just struggle with Opus to tell me what its smaller brother messed up, rather than use this. But not everyone is like me. Some people like professional tools. Anyway, I digress. So, what it does is basically give you four commands, starting from specify. Here, you specify a task, and then it generates a basic overview of how to get that done. We then move to plan, which is for architectural decisions. It can choose the architecture and frameworks to use, or you can give it your input about what you want it to do. Once that is done, You'll need to run the tasks command in order to create tasks that implement what you really want to do. After that, you can just ask your coder to implement the task number that it generates in the task list and then get it running from there. It only supports GitHub Copilot, Gemini CLI, and Claude Code as of now. This is because, although it seems like a CLI tool at first, it actually isn't. It basically allows you to run this command, and this initializes a simple project, or basically a folder, with custom subcommand files, like what you'd make manually in something like Claude Code or Gemini CLI. So, it basically does that. Let's get into it, and let me show you how you can use it as well. I've also tested it to see how well, or how badly, it works. But before proceeding, let me tell you about Ninja Chat. Ninja Chat is an all-in-one AI platform where, for just $11 per month, you get access to top AI models like GPT-40, Claude 4 Sonnet, and Gemini 2.5 Pro. All in one place. I've been using Gemini for quick research, but what's really cool is their AI playground where you can compare responses from different models side by side. Their mind map generator is a game changer for organizing complex ideas as well. The basic plan gives you 1,000 messages, 30 images, and 5 videos monthly with higher tiers available if you need more. Use my code KING25 for 25% off any plan or KING40 yearly for 40% off annual subscriptions. Check the link in description to try it yourself. Now, back to the video. First, you'd have to run this command and enter your project name with it. If you want to run it multiple times, then I'd recommend making an alias in your shell profile and just running that. Anyway, just do that, and it will open up this interface. Here, you'll have to select which coder you want to use for this task. I'll be using Claude Code for this example, but you can also use GitHub Copilot and so on. Once you do that, it will take a bit of time and get spec kit initiated and a project folder created as you asked. I found an issue with it, though. 
The issue was that it didn't allow any easy way to initialize into an existing project or into an already bootstrapped project. That's a bummer. I believe it's rather geared towards vibe coders or something, and not something more practically oriented. Anyway, what you'll see in the folder are these subfolders and files. These contain the specifications for the slash commands that will work with this. So, here's this. Now we can go into Claude code, and you'll see these subcommands here as well. Let's start with specify. I'll ask it to build me a mobile movie tracker app that uses the TMDB API and is sleek and modern. This is also the prompt for one of my benchmarks, so we can see how good, or how bad, the thing it makes really is. Now, what this will do is go ahead and start creating a file called spec markdown. That file will contain all the research it does in order to implement the specification you give it. It basically expands your one-line prompt into a full-fledged prompt that is then passed on in the planning stages. You can see that it has a template for the specification, and it adapts that to my prompt. It detailed what I wanted, listed potential features, things to think about, and stuff like that. In a bit, this step gets done, and it creates the specification that I just showed you before. Now, we can ask it to plan. Generally, you wouldn't want to give your stack or framework choices in the first specification stage. You just tell it what you want to build. Then, in this step, you should tell it about the framework. I'm going to enter the slash plan command, and I'll ask it to use expo and some kind of local storage along with the TMDB API. Now this will go ahead and start working on a proper plan with all the details. It also creates some contracts, data models, and schemas to make sure that APIs and everything work just as they need to. So, this is kind of cool. You can check the plan in the data model, the execution plan, and stuff like that as well. That's also kind of cool. It creates a ton of markdown files, though, and I'm not sure what each one is used for. Anyway, the next and final command is the tasks command. This will create the task breakdown and prompts for each task for Claude. You can check the tasks in the tasks markdown file as well, and it made a ton of tasks. Like, a ton of them. So, I then asked it to just proceed and implement everything. The first thing it messed up was setting up the Expo project, which happens almost every time. That's why I usually try to initialize it myself and then run the agent in that. But it didn't allow for that because it initializes a folder itself. So I left it to itself. Once it gets done, I'd have to say that this makes Claude write good and structured code. It separates the components into their own files and everything, which is great and much more structured. But now, if you run this, you just get a JSON string. And I don't know why this happens. So, I asked it to fix it, and it went ahead and tried to fix it. But another error occurred, where it wasn't registering the environment variables and stuff. Then it tried to fix that as well, and this was the final thing. So, you can see that this is what it looks like. It isn't anything extraordinary. This is what I'd get in a one-hit generation as well. In fact, it has fewer features, which I'm not a fan of. If we talk about the cost, then if you use it with something like Sonnet, it costs a ton of money. This whole generation took me about $8, which is a lot for a super simple generation. Yes. You should be able to configure this with something like Grok and maybe get better results. But I think the stuff it tries to implement gets very complex, even for simpler tasks. That's not something I'd recommend doing with a low-knowledge model. So yeah, I don't really get stuff like this. It seems like something that just eats tokens rather than letting you get additional work done. Just for context, 
It took me over five to ten minutes just to get the planning stuff done. It adds a lot of overhead, a lot of time, a lot of context, a lot of cost, and like five or ten percent better results. I don't get the context engineer hype at all. It's not for me, because I didn't get AI to add overhead to my work. It might be good for you, and you can give it a try. But I thought I'd share my thoughts as well. So yeah, I didn't get it. I don't really like it, but I thought I'd talk about it nonetheless. Overall, it's pretty cool. Anyway, share your thoughts below and subscribe to the channel. You can also donate via Super Thanks option or join the channel as well and get some perks. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.